although there had been mods around since 76 in little individual pockets and even as late as 78 they didn't realise each other existed and so by the time we had the Great British Music Festival I think the jam played the end of November at the Wembley Arena they were headlining on the first night that's the first time all those different mods who were calling them, who were consciously called themselves mods, like Tony Morrison, like Grant Fleming, uh, Oxton Tom, people like that. That's the first time they realised there was more than just them. Ian got taken down to the barge ground in Barking and saw this scene of all the young mods, of all uh, Tom and Dave Lawrence and all those guys. And you'd, the whole pub would be packed with people in moe suits and it, everyone and the plant scar and fantastic sixties music. And it really was. And he turned around and said. These are the Glory Boys. This is, I've had this vision of the Glory Boys, but these are the Glory Boys. So he anointed them. In fact, it was the same group of people who'd been into punk, then got into Skinhead briefly, then became Mods, Glory Boys, got, then started following the Rejects, and it, after that, the casual thing came up. Yeah, but it was the same people. Yeah, it was an incredible... I was incredibly lucky to have known and befriended a lot of these guys who were unknowingly were the actual vanguard of, of street fashion. Paul had the ump with me, but I'd only found out indirectly when I did the thing about mods at South End, which would have been August Bank Holiday 79, and I quoted the lyrics from uh, When You're Young. But the reason I quoted the lyrics was because it just seemed to mirror the way those kids were. Absolutely mirrored the feeling of uh, an excitement, and it really was. It, it did the whole thing, it did let you think you was a king when you were really just a pawn. The music press turned on mod, absolutely turned on it. Uh, they, they, Dave McCulloch slated the chords and the Purple Heart, Purple Hearts on the basis of one song. He heard one song from each of them and re re he really did review the rest of the set from the bar. The annoying thing about the, the way the press was with the mods, they were saying, well, they're just revivalists. And then Two Tone came along, mm. and I, I love Two Tone, I'm not pretending I didn't love Two Tone, but there was far more absolute just taking an old song and putting your new words on it in Two Tone than there ever was in, uh, ever was in Mod. I mean, they were, you, all of those songs were familiar to me from being a kid and liking Skull. Mm -hmm. And it was, yeah, the specials were seen as being this great creative new force. <laughs> and the poor old Cords and Secret Affair got, got rubbish by the press. Whatever, there was far less just stealing going on. The casuals were the mods, the real mods yeah. of, the, of the generation because yeah. they weren't going back and uh, into a retro thing. They were actually doing, it was the same sort of lifestyle, the same sort of obsession with fashion, the same sort of love of black music. It was just fantastic to watch. The thing, that, obviously the thing about them was they were different. Like they dressed differently for a start, they looked different. But they still had that same punk energy and they, that, they were tremendously exciting to watch because they were Rick, Rick and Becker guy and all that. When I say Rick and Becker, yeah, they were tremendously exciting to watch because they were Rick and Becker and all that sort of. Have I said it wrong again? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'll, I'm a, I had a bit too much to drink. No,